this is your orchestration tutor, Thomas Goss, and today it's my great pleasure and honor to bring you the music of Hungarian composer Kemenyi Gabor. Here are a couple of great things about YouTube. One is how it brings creative artists together to share their works, building a community around things like music and filmmaking. The other is how a video can represent not just a work of art, but a unique window into the life of an artist. The uploads on Gabor's channel are more than just music. They tell the story of the promise and potential of a young composer a generation ago, and how that composer is now picking up the pieces of his career today. hard-driving circus-like concertino for two pianos dates from that early period in Gabor's life. In 1980, the 26-year-old composer was commissioned by the Hungarian Radio Orchestra to write a series of works, of which this was the first. It was a good break for a young composer, and led to steady work for the orchestra in doing a number of orchestrations over the following decade. It's worth pointing out that the Hungarian Radio Orchestra is also known under the name of the Budapest Symphony Orchestra, and is regarded as one of the finest European orchestras. The impression that you get from listening to these tracks from three decades ago is of a professional composer at the height of his powers, being performed with true sincerity and respect by some of the best musicians in his country. Another commission and performance by the orchestra was this piece, the 1981 Ragtime in F. It brilliantly recaptures that whole French Salon era fascination with American music, and how composers like Satie, Mio, Debussy, and Stravinsky composed tributes. This piece is in itself a tribute to those efforts, but it has the twist of Gabor's own individual voice and energy in a lot of the passages and contrasts. One of the ironies about the fall of Eastern European communism was that even though the new democratic environment was politically and socially liberating, it was economically and culturally disastrous. A lot of the institutions that had supported the arts were broken up or drastically reorganized, and it had a chilling effect on the careers of a lot of promising young composers. To make matters worse, there was a massive recession in the early 90s, which made it even harder for a Hungarian composer to survive as a freelancer. Perhaps some of that personal struggle is reflected in this string quartet from 1999. The outer movements have that great Hungarian modernist quality of polytonality, reflecting a deep inner searching with several levels of thought and emotion. As intriguing as that is, my favorite part is the second movement, how it starts with this massive unison melody, exploring and developing a theme with both passion and technical daring. Watch for how Gabor contrasts this mighty arc with a discrete fragment of pizzicato, then a contrapuntal section running parts of the theme against itself. When the unison starts again, 
It has a freshness and power that's cinematic. Let's take a closer look at that concertino for two pianos and strings that we heard earlier. The second movement has some great lessons in it for the student orchestrator, both in string writing and in thematic texture. The elements are fairly simple, but Gabor arranges them with elegance and poetry. There's more than a touch of Rachmaninoff here, a composer who Gabor admittedly admires. But what I like about it is the restraint and thoughtfulness of the music. It's all the deeper emotionally for not being over-sentimental. Watch for how the melodic writing in the strings plays to the strongest part of their range, and the phrasing is almost written right into the action of the instruments. Nothing in the sound picture overstays its welcome, and the strings bring a symphonic feeling without interfering with the flow of the music. When you go and view these clips for yourself, you'll see that Gabor has very considerately combined images of his score for you to read along with. And therein lies another story. When I first stumbled across Gabor's channel about a year ago, I was very impressed with the content and immediately wanted to share it with my viewers. This is how I got the idea of this Composer of the Month series, in fact. Well, I was full of excitement about it, and I contacted Gabor, but he told me that he'd lost the score years ago, and he only had the recording. I suggested that he go back to Hungarian Radio and check if they had the score. They didn't, but what they did have was a box of the original parts. So for a couple of months, one of Gabor's friends carefully pieced the score back together for him, and as a result, it can now be seen on his channel. My opinion is that this is some first-class duo piano writing. It's so rare when a composer really writes something in this genre that not only has scope and imagination, but a key sense of interrelationship between all the instruments, not just the two soloists. In a concerto setting, the orchestra can often come off as a mere afterthought to the two competing egos at the piano. But Gabor has really written something that is as interdependent as clockworks, not to mention witty and sublime. It deserves far more than the footnote that it's gotten up to now. It's easy to see what a great duo could do with this in their standard concert repertoire. And not just this work. Gabor himself has got quite a bit more music in him to judge from the many sketches and samples that he's recently uploaded. This composer should be commissioned to write some more major works, and his body of work up to now should be performed and recorded by serious musicians. So that's September 2010's YouTube Composer of the Month. Join me next month when we go to Poland to see the channel of one of YouTube's most prolific composers, whose works are being played by musicians from all over the world and all over the internet. See you then.
Thank you.